Welcome back to ETF.com University, where we demystify the world of ETFs. My name is Dave Nodig, Managing Director here at ETF.com, and this is the second video in a series we're doing on how to find that next great ETF for you. If you haven't seen the last video on due diligence, I recommend you start there and watch it before going forward, as it helped walk through how to find a specific fund you might want to look deeper into. Today, we're going to focus on just one part of the process. And that starts with understanding just the basics and the efficiency of a given ETF. So what do we mean when we talk about efficiency? Well, I always imagine efficient as being something like the enterprise from Star Trek. It's ordered, it's well constructed, it's well run, it's designed to last for years. Everything just does what you would expect it to do most of the time. When we talk about the efficiency of an ETF, I really think we're talking about the same thing. Does the ETF run smoothly? Does it track what it says it's going to track? Does it do what it says it's going to do? Basically, does this fund deliver on its promises? When you go into any ETF fund report on ETF.com, whether you come through the finder or click on a link, or whether you just enter the ticker in your browser like this, you're going to be met with a screen like this. So let's take a tour of what's here. The first thing you may notice after the name and today's price is this space here for various badges. In this case, we've got one for IEMG that says A99 and then this little award marker. So what does all that mean? Well, the good news is that almost everything on ETF.com has a little hover text that explains things. So if you hover over the A, it will say that A is the rollup of efficiency and tradability, and that 99 is just the fit score of this fund. Now, what does that mean? We'll cover that all a little bit later. The award symbol, well, that means that the analysts at FactSet have determined that an average investor seeking straightforward exposure to this segment, in this case, the total emerging markets universe, this would be the best fund available. But we shouldn't stop there because we may not be average. We might want something a little bit different. So here we've got various other ways to navigate. You can click on other tickers to go to those individual funds. You can click on the segment name to see all the competing funds compared, or you can click on any of these ETF channels to see big lists of funds that share a similar characteristic, like say, all the emerging markets funds. The overview tab here is just what it says, a quick overview of what the fund is and what it does, hopefully in pretty plain English. You'll find a description of the fund, some context from our partners at FactSet, and even a brief description of MSCI's ESG take on the fund. And then you'll also see some summary statistics. And for a lot of investors, a big chunk of what you might be looking for is right here. How expensive is the fund? How big is it? What's the volume? What are the spreads? There are also some brief stats on the portfolio itself, some links to recent articles that have featured this fund, a simple performance chart. And on that chart, you can compare to other funds you might find interesting. So for instance, I could take a look at how this fund is done compared to say the S&P 500 over the last year. Below that, there are a few quick charts on holdings. And then we're into the details. And here's where the interesting bits come into play under efficiency. Now you may remember from our total cost of ownership video where we talked about how expense ratio is just a part of understanding your true costs. Well, here's the other parts. Yeah, the expense ratio is here, but you can also see the tracking difference. In this case, you'd expect a fund to have a negative tracking difference equal to about its expense ratio. So you'd expect this fund, IEMG, to miss its index by about 14 basis points in expenses over a 12 month window. But in fact, you can see this fund has beaten its index by 22 basis points. And in the best 12 month window, it's beaten it by even more than that. In the worst window, it's beaten it, still beaten it by five basis points. So yes, in fact, you're getting paid to own this fund compared to owning the theoretical index. Now, if you want more info about how that's even possible, you can go back to that total cost video for a deeper dive. You can also find other information here, like how this fund is taxed. You can see here, it hasn't made any capital gains distributions in years. 
Last in the fund structure column, you can see how the fund is built, whether it loans out its securities to short sellers, in this case it does, and it pays 80% of the revenue from that activity back to the fund. And there are a few other tidbits you might find interesting, like whether the fund has a high risk of closing over the next year. Of special note here is information about counterparty risks if this was an exchange traded note. So let's check one out. This is the IPATH Bloomberg Commodity Index ETN, DJP. Now ETNs can be a good answer to solving some of the tricky tax issues with commodities since they get just taxed like a stock. So DJP has been quite successful. And here we can see the tax treatment is in fact just like that. It's an ETN, it's, tra it's treated like a stock. And we can see the counterparty here is Barclays Bank. And the risk associated with Barclays Bank being the counterparty is low. That's based on looking at the credit rating of the bank. And as with almost everything on these pages, if you're not sure what something is, you can just hover over it and get a description. That's gonna wrap it up for this quick video on efficiency and just diving into a fund page. In our next videos, we're gonna look at understanding how an ETF trades and where an ETF might fit into your portfolio, what makes it unique. I hope you'll join us for the rest of the series.